what didn't you say? Basically, what I did was um, I just gave some of the facts, and I was hoping that those facts would lead to a thorough investigation into Yoga Nanda Pittman's actions before, during, and after January 6th, and unfortunately, that did not happen. So you're talking about the same person that the police chief is talking about there. Absolutely. And... Um, and what exactly was her role? She was in charge of intel. And when I say she was in charge of intel, she was in charge of the intelligence on January 6th and anybody that worked in the intelligence division. She was in charge of it all. And her job was to get that information, and she was supposed to give that to, at the very least, two people. She was supposed to give that information to Stephen Sund. And she was supposed to give that information to Chad Thomas. He was the uh, former, he is a former assistant chief of the Capitol Police. And his role on the day was he was in charge of operations, which mm. would have been the bureau in charge of getting the officers ready for what they were going to face on January 6th. And so, she did not do that. So when we found out that the FBI knew about this, the Justice Department knew about this, uh, Nancy Pelosi knew about this in advance. It was, we can't necessarily blame the police for not knowing it because it would have only come through her. Now, um, if you let me walk you through, I'm sure. going to need a couple of minutes to walk yeah, yeah. You through this. Go um, ahead. Now, I've been trying to get the, um, I would say the entire country to see Yogananda Pittman's significance and what occurred on January 6th. And it's almost the same as um, the few people that were trying to explain to other people that the world was actually round in that flat. Mm. So this is what I'm trying to get the country to see that the world is round in that flat. Now, a lot of people, they, they want to focus on Nancy Pelosi, but you can talk about Nancy Pelosi. You can talk about Joe Biden. Neither one of those people could have occurred or could have made January 6th happen. The only way January 6th can happen, um, you would have to get the consent and permission from Yogananda Pittman. She is that pivotal. Now, let me explain to you why. Uh, and I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to use an analogy uh, to make, to break it down and make it a little bit more easy. Okay. Uh, if you want to follow me. Yeah, I am. Um, let me know whenever you're ready. I'm ready. I got a pencil ready to go. Okay. So let's say that you have um, a grocery store. And um, in that grocery store, you have three different heads that work in the grocery store. You have the, the, man, the overall manager. You have the, um, you have the operations manager. This person would be in charge of, like, the grocery store employees, security around the grocery store. And you would have the loss prevention manager. Um, that person obviously would be in charge of, you know, any thefts that occurred, um, of, of things that would be in the store. Okay. So let's say that um, I'm going to give these people names. I'm just going to just make names up randomly. Okay. Um, let's say the, um, the loss prevention manager was, let's just say Pittman. <laughs> um, let's say that the operations manager, um, let's give him the name of Thomas. And let's call the overall manager, um, let's call him, let me think of a good name. Let's call him Sun. Okay. <laughs> so now um, Sun is getting information. And there's information out there in the community that the store is going to be is going to get robbed of all of the um, all of the Twinkies, all of the steaks, the lamb chops, everything. Somebody's going to come in there and they're going to take all the lamb chops. So now you're going to go to the uh, loss prevention manager and you're going to ask that manager, hey, what are you getting? And the loss prevention manager is saying, listen, I'm not getting anything. Right. So now um, Sund, who is the store manager, he's he has to go. Um, get uh, assistance from the local police department. So he goes to the police department. He says, hey, guys, uh, I need some, some assistance. I need some patrols. I have a security guy, the guy with the, the white car, with the orange overhead over top of that, who drives around the store at night. But I need more than that. I need police officers that are going to be doing around-the-clock uh, drive-bys by my store. And the police chief of the local department says, um, Mr. Son, I understand what you want. He says, but... Um, what intelligence are you getting? He says, well, I'm getting this, this, and this. And, and the uh, police chief says, 
sir, I'm sorry, sir. The intelligence doesn't support it. So now let's say that the loss prevention person, that's the name I gave to Pittman, mm-hmm. has a report that says, well, um, there's going to be a guy coming to the store around eight o'clock in the morning. He's going to be bringing four, um, four of those big giant trucks. Um, that they normally deliver food in. Um, they're going to break into the store at about 10 guys, and they're going to take all the food out. So um, now she has this report, but um, she either sits on this report or she downplays the report to the chief. So the chief, I'm sorry, to the store manager. So the store manager can't get the resources from the police department because the, the intelligence doesn't support it. That's what happened on January 6th. And to explain to you the significance of um, yoga non Pittman. So let's say that for argument's sake, and I'm not saying that this is the case, but Pelosi wanted this to happen. Let's say Biden wanted this to happen. And they call yoga non Pittman and they say, listen, um, I'm going to order you not to give chief son any information related to January 6th. You're not going to give him any information uh, um, that would support the national guard. You, you're going to downplay anything that's major because we need something to happen on January 6th. And I'm not saying either one of them did that. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just saying that I know I've heard in the atmosphere that uh, I hear Nancy Pelosi's name a lot. Um, but now um, I know the position of the Speaker of the House and the line of succession that she's in to the presidency. She's second in line. If something happens to the vice president and the president, she would then become president. So she's a mm-hmm. very powerful person. But understand this, even though she, she's powerful in her own arena, Yogananda Pittman was the most powerful person in her own arena. So Pittman couldn't just call her and say, don't give any information to Chief Sun, because she can say, absolutely not. I want to give Chief Sun everything he needs and um, to, to do a good job and make sure that the Capitol is adequately prepared on January 6th. Nobody can make Yogananda Pittman not do that. So this is the now, this is what I haven't said, and I'm going to have to say it now. Now, because I just try to give the facts. But sometimes you have to, because, and then when you go off and you tell people what you think, then they try to call you a conspiracy theorist. But, right. um, but sometimes you have to tell people what you think and then let them make a decision if they believe is valid or not. So um, obviously, it was, to me, in my position, some, something or somebody made Yogananda Pittman feel that if she sat on or either downplayed the intelligence given to Chief Sun um, about January 6th, and uh, something were to happen, Chief Sun would take full responsibility for it, which he would because he is the actual chief of police. And then mm-hmm. Yogananda Pittman would become the chief. That's what I believe would occur on January 6th. And if you look at the report, um, now, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's 21 uh, TD-159. And it basically um, laid, um, laid out what was going to occur on January 6th. And even if you could try to make the argument um, when you go back to the store, well, you could say um, the intelligence said it was going to be four trucks that um, that the person brought when they broke in and they were going to take everything. But this person only brought three trucks and he took 70 percent of what was available right. in the store. So she's going to you're going to try to um, downplay it to, to make it seem like you didn't have the intelligence when you actually did have the intelligence. So um, so I say all that to say um, January 6th cannot happen without her permission. It cannot. It's impossible. She is the alpha and omega of what occurred on January 6th, and the world needs to know that. No one can stop Yogananda Pittman from sending Chief Sun the information he needed to get the support he needed from the National Guard. She can sit on it, she can downplay it, and that's what I believe she did on January 6th at the very least, leading up to January 6th. And not that you're saying this um, at all, and nor am I, because I don't have any facts. I just have, I just have uh, uh, indications that she was rewarded with a job in Nancy Pelosi's district, a very high-level job. She became the, poli- the Capitol Police chief. It was her failure. She was promoted, and then... She was allowed to uh, take this job while still getting benefits from Capitol Police, which is which is against the the rules. Somebody had to make that happen, and it may have been Nancy Pelosi, but somebody made that uh, made that happen. So that looks 
very suspicious as well, correct? Um, 100%. But let me even go back, even before that. Let's go back before she left the department. Uh, well, she didn't le- really leave the department until June, but um, the but Manger told everybody, and that's um, um, Jay Thomas Manger, who was the current chief of the Capitol Police. He told everybody, I think it was, it was called a, um, we put out like upfronts. Um, and that's like basically an announcement to the department that, um, you know, any news and the news that he gave was that she was leaving the department um, back in February. I think he put that out in November. But anyway, of uh, 2022. But anyway, um, let's go back. So Yogananda Pittman was the chief on January the 8th. She was made acting chief on January the 8th after a chief son was fired. And um, she was the chief, acting chief until I believe it was July 23rd, and then Manger took over on uh, July 24th of 2021. So she was the acting chief for um, from that time, from January to July. So when uh, Manger takes over, the first thing, one of his first actions is uh, when he took over as the ch- when he took over as the chief from Yogananda Pittman. Do you know what he did? No. Okay, he made he re- he put Yogananda Pittman back in charge of intelligence. Now, why do you do that? Why would he do something like that? He did it to send a message to any officer that was going to try to speak against Yogananda Pittman to let them know that even though she messed up, because everybody in the world knows she messed up, um, that it doesn't matter what she did. This is Yogananda Pittman. She's going to be in your boss again. So the people who in Intel who went and reported her became their boss again so Holy what do you cow. think that, that the people that 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 the whistleblowers are thinking when you put her back in charge of them that's okay. why he did it 